Uh, let me introduce myself and introduce them. Um, I'm Vince Gennaro. I'm the director of the Masters in Sports Management program right here at Columbia. Uh, it's one of the top ranked programs of its kind in the world. And uh, I also am a consultant to Major League Baseball teams. I wrote the book Diamond Dollars, The Economics of Winning in Baseball, and I consult in the area of analytics. So I came to know uh, Jason and Jordan uh, in their time here at Columbia and then involved with the Columbia Startup Lab. Um, and let me introduce our two, uh, our two experts and co-founders here of, uh, of DeServo, the, uh, of the, which the video you just saw. Sitting next to me here is Jordan Moraskin. Jordan is, a, is the CTO, a chief technology officer. He's worked in, in the brain imaging field for 10 years, and he's the co-inventor of the intellectual property of DeServo. Uh, he's an expert and pioneer in electric encephalography. And he holds uh, patents in brain imaging and, and, and extensive experimental and analytical experience. He's got a BS and a PhD in biomedical engineering from Columbia. And uh, sitting next to him is Jason Sherwin. Jason's a PhD also. He's the CEO of DeServo. And he's formerly a research professor of visual neuroscience at the State University of New York. And before that, he was a postdoctoral research scientist here at Columbia. And, uh, and also at the Oak Ridge Associated Universities. And he's a postdoc fellow at University uh, Army Research Laboratory. His research focus was really on perceptual decision making in real world environments. So what you saw in that introductory video was an application, specifically an app, of a technology that Jason and Jordan have both developed and brought to market and, and I can speak from a practitioner's viewpoint on this since I work daily with Major League Baseball teams and helping them become more and more effective at winning games by uh, producing talent, uh, selecting the right talent, and helping develop talent. And one of the key things that this technology does is it helps in the area of pitch recognition. And for those of you who perhaps aren't uh, uh, diehard baseball fans, uh, you might wonder, well, why would that be so important? Well, think about the whole construct of the sport of baseball is built around the batter-pitcher confrontation, and winning those confrontations from either the pitchers or the batter side is really critical to winning the game. And one of the most difficult things for a hitter is to distinguish at that point of one-third to one-half way to the plate when the ball is released from the pitcher's hand of whether or not it's going to be in the strike zone, how it's going to move, and so forth. They have a technology that actually, on one level, you could think of as pretty abstract. They've done a great job of making this very tangible and making it a product that Major League Baseball teams, youth teams, collegiate teams can use to help improve their chances of winning and develop their talent. So let me, let me start by asking, um, talk a little bit about what, how, you, how you define the product and service that you offer and what it does. Right. So um, <clears throat> at DeServo, what we do is try and measure what colloquial, colloquial term is seeing the pitch, having a good eye. And so what we try and do is measure how and when and how accurately baseball players are able to decide they're going to swing or not swing at a baseball pitch. And so we use a combination of video games, some of what you just saw, and EEG, electroencephalography, which measures your brain activity. And one, our, our product, what it's able to do is pull out information from how your brain is making these decisions to help you and us decode when you're making these decisions and how early on you're seeing a fastball versus a curveball or a strike versus a ball. So being able to tell when a player can say, I'm swinging at this peach pitch 20 feet from release instead of 30 feet from release is valuable information for the player to train themselves to get better at pitch recognition, but also for baseball teams to scout and do, um, you know, player assessments. Right, and that's and that's something that applies, really. If you think of every sport like a pyramid, right, where you've got the fewest number of players up here, the professionals, and then as you keep going down to lower levels, collegiate, high school, little league, etc., players always trying to get better individually going up this way. Whereas you have the at the major league level, they're really look at, they're really making decisions off of milliseconds and uh, millimeters resolution um, in their field of view. So every millisecond counts, and that's the kind of thing that we're measuring uh, with our with our uh, EEG based technology, um, and then with the games that they play, like the ones that you saw up there. 
So I, I'm curious, how did you get from, you know, your neuroscience and MRI expertise that you have, both of you, to this app, this very specific application for baseball? You would have thought there was a lot of things in between that you might have uh, uh, right. jumped over to get there. Yeah, well, um, it, uh, it's funny because Jordan and I sat across from one another uh, right over here on 120th Street for about a year before talking to each other. <laughs> and uh, he worked in MRI. I was new to the field in EEG. I came from aerospace engineering and physics before that. And, um, but we occasionally would talk on opening day because he's a Yankees fan and I was a Cubs fan. I am a Cubs fan, unfortunately. So that conversation is pretty short. And so I knew that he was a baseball nut and that's about it. And then um, I was doing some work, uh, uh, Vince mentioned, with the, with the Army, um, which, where we were looking at uh, soldiers making decisions off of the sound of gunshots, whether it's towards them or away from them, how they decide to shoot back or not. That was built on research looking at how musicians hear music uh, differently than non-musicians. So we started seeing in EEG that there was this expertise signal that you can measure. And it, it's manifest in all sorts of ways. And so, um, you know, because we were baseball nuts, uh, Jordan came up to me one day and said, how about we do this in baseball? And, yeah, sure. So that's where this all really mm -hmm. started. We did an EEG study. We did an EEG fMRI study. This is an uh, area that Jordan did his uh, PhD work on. And so we've really looked at all the ways on a spatial level, on a temporal level, and on a behavioral level, the things you see from a distance, um, how baseball players do this, right? How they make those decisions in less than a half a second, right? You know, you're at a point now where you're working with a number of major league baseball teams, and I know you've done work at the collegiate level as well. How do you determine whether your technology and application is going to be more uh, relevant as an evaluation tool versus as a developmental and coaching tool to improve performance? Yeah, so we've been experimenting with these teams uh, along with them. And when we went into it, our first thought would be a scouting tool, that this can be a, a straight assessment of player ability, um, give them a baseline. So you could test a player in Puerto Rico, and you could test a player in Arizona, you give them the same test, and there you could remove some of the confounding variables. Um, when we've spoken with more teams, we've realized that each team actually wants something a little bit differently. Some teams want more scouting, some teams want more performance enhancement and training. And so what we're learning as a, as a company is how to tailor our products to each of these uh, teams and, and see how they uh, will use them. As engineers, we like working with the customers so that we can make them as usable as, as possible. So we think uh, the first step of DeServo is, is, is as a scouting tool, but the training comes in as a way to test how well you are doing over time, and then you can make rapid changes. So while our tool right now might not be used for training, it can help in your training. Yeah, I mean, and that's, that's something that, um, that kind of reaction to what the customer demands are is something that, you know, is, is really built into our strategy here because, you know, we have the, the kind of general concept understanding of how, how to measure the nervous system making quick decisions, but the real variables in terms of implementing this in the real world depend on the practitioners. So, you know, kind of like um, actor, a good actor, you know, you listen more than you speak on stage. We're trying to listen to the players, we're trying to listen to the coaches, we're trying to listen to the front office uh, people um, and figuring out what's the best way that this fits in with uh, a, a need that they have and in many cases don't even know is possible. Mm -hmm. do, do you have a sense yet of, even, if, even through other examples that are not baseball, just in the whole area of neuroscience, do you have any evidence of how much of the skill that you're monitoring is teachable versus innate? Yeah, I mean, no one's born knowing how to hit a curveball. <laughs> Everyone learns how to hit a curveball. So the question is, you know, um, how, I mean, it's very interesting for us, I think we'll see over, over time as we do this more, because um, sports in particular is, is something that's extremely selective early on, in, in, in particularly in youth development, right? The, the kids who are older in the class usually do better in sports because they're just a little bit stronger on average than the kids who are younger in the class. And those successes kind of build up from, you know, as they get out of their 
Little League into, into Pony League, into high school, et cetera, and then all the way up to college and professional. So, you know, by finding a new way, really, of, of performing, of scouting, even in this case, uh, via the cognitive capacity of a player, I mean, you're not looking for, um, the way I explained it to a journalist once was, it's not the million dollar arm you're looking for, it's the million dollar brain, right? And so that's something that, you know, the, the kid whose body hasn't caught up with him yet, um, but he's amazing at picking out sliders, that's something we'd be able to now measure, right? And that kid will get the positive enforce, reinforcement that he needs for when his body does catch up. Yeah, yeah. And um, so you, you came through Columbia, and then you also moved through the startup lab, right? And talk a little bit about that whole experience and what that meant to getting the company to where it is today. Yeah, it was uh, really uh, helpful for us. It was really great being part of the inaugural class, being down in Soho, um, working with Ivy, working with everyone in the lab who helped us sort of get our sea legs within the startup world and allowed us to, uh, you know, our first set of funds from uh, one of the grants they gave us and able to then work with Columbia Tech Ventures to get our IP out of Columbia. So our invention, uh, my, part of my PhD, part of working with Jason, uh, we have the patent and Columbia owns it and sort of we had to then work with CTV and the Columbia Startup Lab helped us you know, a space, a place for meetings, a place for... Better than Starbucks. <laughs> a place for meeting with other like-minded startup people and, and, you know, transferring ideas. And it, it, was, it was extremely helpful and, and necessary for us, for getting us to where we are now. Well, and it's a, it's a great success story for the model, too, of how things can flow through and, and ultimately get to the market and, and have a real chance of being highly successful and having an impact. Um, what's the future beyond, beyond pitch recognition in baseball, which, which is a very narrow application of, I'm sure, what, what is a broader technology? Where else do you see this going, in sports or out of sports? Well, within sports, um, a, lot of, a lot of sports re revolve around tr predicting the trajectory of a, a thrown object. Think of cricket, uh, a, a hit object. Think of tennis, deciding you go, um, you know, uh, backhand or forehand, right? on a serve. So I mean there are a lot of sports where trajectory prediction and fast trajectory prediction is important. Um, so those are a couple examples off, off the bat so to speak. Um, the, uh, if you think of other sports like soccer, hockey, uh, 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 basketball, right? These are all sports where yes there's a ball involved but it's also the trajectory of players on the court. The ones on your team and on the other team and so they call that in basketball court vision. They say Tom Brady has you know this amazing field vision, those kind of things. So what we're starting to do now is get into get into that aspect of things in terms of how players make decisions about you know do I pass to that guy or do I pass to that guy? Should I have shot here or should I have passed there? Right? Those kind of quick decisions that happen in pretty varied contexts but on a neural level the experts, once again, remember, they process that data in a very efficient way if they're really good at it. And so we'd be able to measure, um, and we, are, we have done this with football players in particular already, uh, Division I here at Columbia, actually, and shown that you know, there is a way to measure their decisions in certain contexts, for instance, off the line of scrimmage, when they decide that the snap is happening, right? When was that visual cue that they saw that the snap was coming? So it's in those kinds of contexts in sports that we're starting to bridge into. Um, and then beyond that, um, I mean, having come from the Army world, uh, there, there are plenty of applications in, in military uh, training, military officer training, intelligence officer training, things like that, um, and even some other business angles. Um, we're, we're really coming right down to the, to the end of our time. I, I just wanted to, to wrap up by saying, um, if you think about what's happening in the data world, we've talked a lot about data analytics here at this conference today, um, it, it's, it's almost hard to believe that versus just 10 years ago, let's, let's say 2005, we now have 1.3 million times more data per baseball game, okay? So we went from having the box score and a few other details of fly ball to right field was caught and it's an out. We now have the granularity of high speed cameras combined with Doppler radar to get the movement of every player on the field, and by the way, umpires as well, 
and coaches, at every object on the field, the flight of the ball, the velocity of the ball off the bat. We have 20 measures for every pitch that is thrown, 20 different metrics, including the X, Y, and Z axis movement of, of the pitch. So, uh, you know, and then this just adds to that and fits right in with that world that we're entering into. So I guess the, the message I would leave you with is, is this, this is an innovative technology that actually fits like a glove into the mainstream of the data explosion that we're seeing in sports today. So thanks for your time and attention, and great job, guys. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you.